This video is in response to a recent call to action. Making two videos before the end of March is easy enough, but keeping them under five minutes will be a challenge, and the subject matter is a bit vague, so let's begin by defining the term. What is science? Rockets, robots, and vaccinations are all wonderful, but they're just things. They're examples of what science is capable of. Today we're all dependent on these things, and not only do we need this stuff, oftentimes we simply just enjoy it. Unfortunately, there seems to be a lingering and arguably a growing distrust of science, and this is both ironic and dangerous. And just stop to consider the audacity of those who would condemn science while simultaneously benefiting from all the life-sustaining and entertaining stuff that it provides. You know, I like hanging out with you guys. Well, not you guys, but you, the stuff you guys have is great. I think Carl Sagan gave one of the best short answers to this question that I have ever heard. Science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking. And the book most accredited for launching this new way of thinking was written by Francis Bacon. The very title Nova Morganum, which is Latin for new instruments, is a reference to the earlier works of Aristotle. The Organon is a standard collection of six Aristotelian works on logic. And today we typically don't think of logic as an instrument. We're more likely to think of a thermometer, a telescope, or a piano, none of which existed 3,000 years ago when Aristotle put down his pen. You see, Aristotle was smart, but that obviously wasn't enough. The genius of Aristotle was inherently limited by the precision of the instruments available at the time. These new instruments are real game changers, and their availability or lack thereof would result in major philosophical differences between Aristotle and Bacon. To try and illustrate why, I'm going to draw a circle. Okay, that looks horrible, so let me try again using a compass. Okay, this one looks a lot better, but if you look close, you can see that not all the points on this line are an equal distance from the center. Real circles are always perfect, but the ones that Aristotle and I try to draw on paper never are. This general problem of things don't look the way we think they should would lead people like Plato to conclude that ideas and concepts were more important than the material world, which consists of tables and chairs and poorly drawn circles. But was my drawing really that bad? Maybe the instruments I was using weren't precise enough. If I had a sharper pencil, or a sturdier compass, or maybe a different instrument altogether, could I draw that perfect circle? Maybe. Maybe not. But either way, it's important to notice that there's a clear improvement in the circle that's drawn with a more accurate instrument. You see, Bacon realized that even the greatest thinkers were wrong sometimes. And that's okay, we all make mistakes, but this is why we have to actually test our beloved ideas. After all, the errors that we make are not necessarily due to our lack of genius. Maybe it's just the limited precision of the instruments we're using. If Aristotle had sharper tools in his lab, he would have gotten much further. The problem was that Aristotle's lab was pretty empty, so not much testing was done in the first place. In fact, the very idea of testing the claims of an authority figure was generally frowned upon throughout most of history. I like this book. I think the values promoted within its pages have done more to make the world a better place in a shorter time than any other set of ideas that have been promoted in the less impressive works of the distant past. I also like how Bacon places an emphasis on instruments, rather than on those who might operate them. There's no idol worship in science. Of course, the amazing dedication and hard work of lab technicians is absolutely essential, but we have to keep in mind that the range of discovery that can be made in the first place is inherently restricted by the precision of the tools in the lab. A good example of this exists in the relatively recent discovery of the mechanisms of muscle contraction. Have you ever stopped to wonder how your heart contracts automatically without ever taking a rest? And how do the voluntary muscle contractions of, say, your arms and legs differ from those of the heart? And how might they be similar? Smarter people than you and I have spent their entire lives speculating, but now all of a sudden we know and we know it so well that we teach it in introductory courses. Despite many great minds working on the mystery, the answer wasn't revealed until 1954. And as you may have guessed it, the discovery was the direct result of new instruments.